welcome to the Growth Whispers podcast, where everything we talk about is building enduring great companies. And that sounds like a fairly straightforward thing, I'm sure, but there's a lot to it. There's a lot to building a company that lasts generations or ideally even centuries, although we haven't got to this too many times to the century. We've got a few clients that have got there. But anyways, I'm, I'm Kevin Lawrence. I'm joined today by my co-host, Brad Giles. Brad, how are you doing today? Excellent. Very, very good. Super excited about today's topic. Talk about it all the time. Apart from that, good. Life is good, peaceful. It's winter here. Life is good. Awesome. Well, we're in the quadruple heat of summer. We were setting recently records in Canada for the hottest days. And I live on the West Coast in Vancouver, where it's fairly cool, kind of like San Francisco. And we hit 47.5 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, and even my neighbor up at a place that we go up at the lake, he had a thermometer on his deck and it showed 55 degrees. Now, maybe the, in Canada, they're not made to read that high. So it could have been inaccurate <laughs> or maybe because it was in a direct sun. I don't know, but it was damn hot. So we're in the heat, we're in the summer and the heat of summer. And, um, and actually so hot that some of the things you normally like to do aren't as much fun. So yes, it's good. So um, what do, what, let's talk about our topic for today before we get into the word of the day. So what are we talking about today, Brad, that you're really excited about and you talk about all the time and I can see the words on the edge, edge of your lips and you're just ready to talk about it. So what is it that you're so keen on today? Profit per X. Profit per X is a subject for today. Um, and how profit per X uniquely drives profit. Profit per X, it's... A concept from Jim Collins, one of our, uh, I guess, our primary thought leader, for want of a better term, or probably because he's done the, the largest body of research in this best. type of area. He's done pure research on what it takes to build enduring companies and done matched pairs and compared the ones who do amazing things and succeed amazingly and those that don't. He's, yeah, his principles are bulletproof and time tested. And we, you know, we both love them and test them and always come out thrilled with them. And use them all the time with our clients. All the time. Yeah. So profit pressure, digging, but well, before we get deeper into that, Brad, what's your word of the day? My word of the day, intuition versus loyalty. It's a couple of words. I get it, but <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's a word or phrase, right? So sometimes our intuition is telling us something and our loyalty is working against that or stopping us from doing that. So if you can imagine a yin yang symbol, um, the, yep. the the, the yin yang symbol and on one side we've got intuition and the other side we've got loyalty you've got to keep them both in check because sometimes our loyalty to a situation or a person can override our intuition uh, and and we've got to have a good balance between the two so uh, that's my word or thought for the day Awesome. Well, I'm going to go with the two word word today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say trust and anxiety. And it's interesting. I had a great chat with one of my friends, a friend of mine I've been friends with since I was three years old. And so we had dinner here Saturday night, sitting on the deck, having you know a great heart to heart chat that he and I haven't had in a while. And you know, for lots of different reasons, we had, had an amazing chat. And we were talking about, about how you know anxiety can come up sometimes when you don't feel right about a decision or a whole bunch of different things uh, and at the root of it often it's about trust some you don't your instincts tell you and it goes back to your intuition your instincts tell you something ain't right and then you get this underlying almost anxiety and gurgling and bubbling in your system and it, it, you feel unsettled and um so it's, it's a subset of your uh, of, of your of your um uh, your intuition piece, but it's how it manifests and that those things can, you know, bubble up and gurgle up. And, and, and also sometimes it's, it could be something from your past that's unresolved. It could be something that you're dealing with today. But so when you get these sensations and these things coming up, whether it's in your business, your life or otherwise, it, you kind of got to listen to them. Uh, and, and if you don't, um, it generally comes back again and again and again until you do so. That would be so it's 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 trust and anxiety and you know a lack of anxiety often indicates a high level of trust of whatever it happens to be and i often find that when i took some friends out on the racetrack uh last week and you know and when people trust and feel totally trust and relaxed 
and they're not anxious and they actually don't feel like they're going to throw up. So it was, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, that's a physical manifestation of, it. yeah, so that's it. So we've got, we've got uh, some very interesting words here today. So let's, let's jump right into profit per X. And like, like the question I want to start with is, is that why do you need one? Like, you know, it sounds neat. It's a kind of a, oh, you got a profit per X. Isn't that cool? But like, why, why do we, and why should everyone have one and use that in how they run their company? Well, I guess that's also coupled with what is it? So what yeah. it is, what it is, it's a single strategic metric from an economic perspective, or as Jim Collins puts it, the economic denominator, the single economic denominator that becomes the focus of your business uh, at a strategic level. Um, so why do you need one as a part of that? Well, I think you need one because if you don't have one, you don't have a discipline and a focus in any one economic area. And so, yeah. so you don't know what to say no to. If you don't know what to say no to, you say to opportunities as they arise, uh, rather than having a level of discipline around where are mm. we focusing? What are we trying to increase significantly in terms of quantity uh, and then also in terms of um, the dollars? Yeah, and we know that for as business people in business, and, and it could be in a, a charitable organization as well, people get lost in what they're doing. I mean, they get lost in the business busyness of the day. And in many ways, when we're in doing our work, it's like a snow globe that's been shaken up and everything gets you know, murky and hard to see clearly, like you're in a big snowstorm. And idea what the Profit Prex does is it gives you laser focus on a way to look at your business or, 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 or said differently, it's the one window that everyone in the company can look through to have a train of thought about your business and to whether it's to measure success or progress or whatever it happens to be, just to, to make it easier to get back to a couple, uh, to a couple, uh, a simple metric to really guide your thinking versus all the chaos and confusion and, you know, 37 pages of KPI reporting that some companies get. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Um, yeah. That, that's an interesting point because uh, if I go back 20 years ago, I, uh, employed a CPA, a, a certified um, professional accountant, I think it is, a CPA. Correct, uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, and I thought rather than just getting a bookkeeper or an accountant, I'd get a, a, a bona fide accountant. And I got this accountant to produce big, thick reports that were fantastic. And they had all the graphs and all the KPIs every month. And it was it was like, yeah, the board pack that you might expect to receive for a much, much, much larger company. And I thought that was the right thing to do. But then what I realized is I was only opening up because I, you can't, you don't focus on everything. You focus on one thing best. I would open up to page 14 or whatever page it was, and I would look at the one thing. Um, so uh, we want to make a simple area. My point there is, we want a single metric for everyone to focus on. Now, people who are listening might be saying, well, what are you talking about? Isn't that just revenue? Yeah. And, and the answer to that is? No. No, because not all revenue is created equally, right? Some revenue will have a dramatically different impact on profit prex than others. And that's, that's why I love the profit prex. I love anything that keeps you out of commodity thinking or said differently, anything that keeps you thinking because with a desire for growth, a lot of people get excited in chasing revenue and, and chasing revenue is, is often a fool's game. Yeah. Because you, you know, it's interesting. I looked at financials and I won't say specific uh, financials for a company recently. And, you know, it wasn't one of my clients, but for another reason, I looked at their financials and I'm like, huh, another notably mediocre organization. Yeah. They had a lot of top line revenue and a little bit of profit. And I'm like, man, if I owned that business, I'd be embarrassed. If that was one of my clients, I would be, we've got serious work that we need to do because this is, it's below mediocre. I'm pretty sure they don't have a profit per X thinking. 
Yeah. Because if you have a profit per X thinking, it forces you to realize is that you know, your, your goal is to optimize profit, not just make a bigger number at the bottom, but to create an optimized machine that results in a hardier output, no different than a farmer where it's, you know, pounds or, or dollars per acre, mm -hmm. right? They're trying to maximize the acre or they could be maximizing the man hour, who knows? But, but, but basically you want to get the best crop you can in a fixed space. And that's, it's that constraint based thinking that really the profit prex helps to create. It gets you to really think about this is the number I need to drive. And that's why I like it because it just, it makes you think rather than running on autopilot and, 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 and creating buckets of mediocrity. The problem, the reason that discipline matters is that the problem isn't not enough opportunities. The problem is too many opportunities. And some of those opportunities yes. are different than others. Like not all opportunities are created equal. Not all business models are created equal. Not There's all a, salespeople are created equal. Yes. And, you know, and some, some, some salespeople, you bring in a lot of crappy opportunities. I'm not blaming them because if there's not a real margin, gross margin focus or a real profit per X focus, shit, any business looks like good business. Yeah. You know, it's a $14 million account must be good. Must be good. But there's if a, it's going to really drive or dilute our profit per X uh, or yeah, you, 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 anyway, we're on the same page. It's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically, it brings disciplined thinking into what you're doing. There's a friend of the, the two of us have by the name of Alan Miltz. And Alan's mm. got a really fantastic saying that I love, and that's revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. And so for many companies, they're just chasing vanity metrics. It's like, oh, Man, you would be shocked how business. many people do that. Yeah. And, and you can tell because they talk about revenue growth all the time. And my most successful clients talk about gross margin growth or gross profit growth or EBITDA growth, you know, and, and cause again, the farther down the income statement, they're focused as long as they're focused on growth and growing the machine, not just squeezing every penny out of the same size machine. I, I see notable differences in their profitability for the people who think about their profitability. Yeah. Um, I've got awesome. one client and he said, we're not even going to put the revenue number on our plan. Yep. Erase that whole line. Yep. The top line is the gross margin line and it gets people to focus on it. And, you know, the easy yes. trap is to compensate salespeople for uh, revenue rather than gross profit. Um, so, man, have we ever had debates about that? You know, <clears throat> yeah. we, we, we've had debates. Look, if, you know, it, it, where it's landed is, is if the salespeople have no say on pricing, Mm -hmm. You could focus on revenue, i.e. there's no negotiation. It's basically a set price transaction. But otherwise, if the salespeople can influence pricing or margin, when they're paid on margin, stuff changes. We had an organization that ran, and this is, this is legitimate. They ran at about 14% gross margin. We and the salespeople were paid on revenue. We changed comp to gross margin. And then we, we taught the organization gross margin over a two or three year period. I know we hit 28, we might've hit 32% gross margin. I know because 40 of us went on a vacation to Mexico to celebrate, like we <laughs> killed it. Um, but that takes a lot more discipline. It's, a lo it's more work, yeah. it takes more intelligence, takes more brain power, takes more discipline to get there, but it's about aligning systems and most of all aligning thinking and profit per X does a very similar thing. Yes, that's an important point because gross profit is not profit per X. Um, no. we, we went on a, a beautiful- well, and it, can be, it can be gross profit per X. Yeah. It can be net profit per X, but it's not the same. The, the per X adds an extra constraint to it. So what's an X? Yes. Yeah, at X, you know, in, in, in simple terms is an, uh, a unit or, for example, sometimes an X could be per person. It could be per item, i.e. Um, if you were, um, you know, for example, with a, we work with a, uh, a farming company and mm -hmm. for them, it's per pound of product. They look at their business per pound. Another client we look at, it's per case of product they sell.
So profit uh, per case or profit, profit per case. Yeah. Profit per pound. Profit per transaction. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's many other ones, but it's an generally it's an operational unit in your business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 some it's profit per it could be it could be gross profit or net profit uh, or EBITDA whatever you want to measure. Uh, it could be per employee. Yeah. Right. There's 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 all or you know in in um uh for real estate clients it's per square foot, right. Mm -hmm. We we like I've got lots of developers that we work with, and one in India, and it's it's all, you know, rupees per square foot. Mm -hmm. What is our cost, rupees per square foot, and what is our sale price, rupees per square foot? And it brings out all kinds of brilliant, creative thinking, like really not just how do we make it cheaper per square foot or how do we sell it for more per square foot, but do we need all of the square feet, all the square feet? Yeah. Or where are we wasting square feet? Right or, or 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 is there square footage that could be converted or how could we get more square footage in the same space, right or in the same in the same mass um, overall building size? It's just yeah, it's just it's it, it brings really great thinking and I love profit per X. It creates some great brainstorming to think about how to make the business a better business. Yeah, so you could think of it like widgets. It's things that move through your business model. Okay. Yeah. And by focusing on only one, we can ask important questions. And the, I guess the top line thing that I would often say to clients is profit per X is a strategic metric, not an execution metric. All yes. of the things that you have been measuring previously are all about execution metrics. How can we get more revenue or how can we get more that? But profit per X is a strategic metric and is designed primarily to get us to ask the right strategic questions. So many organizations might say something like, well, we can't have that because it's not easy to measure. Our software won't easily produce that yeah. number. But that's not the objective. Remember, the no. objective is to get you to ask the right strategic questions. Yes, it's for the thinking and the debating. And you're like, if you can't measure it right now, that doesn't matter so much. It's just yes. the way that you need to build the discipline to look um, look through the business. Interestingly, in the automotive business, in the automotive retail business, you know, we look at the front end profit per unit car sold. And the back end, and it's it's the whole way we look at it. And they've had to build systems to be able to measure that well and train people. But we know we look across a fleet of dealerships, and we look at each of those rooftops, and we know uh, what's the front end gross, what's the back end gross. We don't have to say the pre prex. We know it's the prex. Plus, mm -hmm. we have another division that does insurance and warranty, which has its own X on or its own profit per X on those on those on those same units. It's just so damn simple, and it's okay. And if it and, and if it really does drive it, it's worth building the systems over time, or doing it manually over time, or doing it back of the napkin manually until you can do it more sophisticatedly. Because it's a guideline that even at the location level or at the individual person level, they can do some quick math and know where they stand and use it as a benchmark. Yeah. So a lot of people will will want to go granular immediately because they're used sure. to focusing on execution. But if we go back of the napkin, okay, so what's the profit of the company? $1 million, okay? Yep. And what is um, the profit per X? Let's say it's people, we've got 100 people. Well, then yep. you've got a simple profit per X to ask strategic questions, which is the purpose of profit per X. So then you could say, okay, well, how do we double it? If we were to double the profit that we get from yep. each of those 100 people, uh, 1 million divided by 100, if we were to double it, what would be the one thing that we would do? Okay, right. we, will, we would probably shut down our Atlanta division. Well, that's interesting. Or we would get into that market or we would do this. Um, it gets you to yeah. ask the right strategic questions. And, and if you've really got it right, there can be value generation that flows through to your clients, right? Like it, it, it's really, it's again, it's, it's a brilliant 
disciplined way to look at your business on an ongoing basis. And it's not just meant to be that you look at it on a regular basis and you look at a report, like you're meant to do something about it. What did we do that increased our profit per X? What drove it down? What are some of the things that we can try and experiment? You know, it's, it's, it's meant to be something that creates ongoing thinking and, and, and dialogue. So a couple of points is that, you know, and you kind of mentioned this already is that, is that it truly is, as you mentioned, Brad, a strategic metric. It's not an operational dialing things in, although there can be component. It's meant for bigger picture strategic thinking, opportunity evaluation, you know, strategy tweaking to really have you think at a macro level making better decisions. And then, you know, the second, the second piece is it relates back into the concept that Collins, Jim Collins calls the hedgehog concept, which is the way that you simply boil your business down. And it's a piece of the hedgehog concept, which really uh, boils your business down into four basic, basic things, which is what you can be the best in the world at. Um, uh, you should have the capabilities to be the best in the world. And it may not be the globe, but it's your world. It might be your community, your country, your region, industry. whatever. It, correct. Or your industry in your region, right? Yep. In the, in, you know, it might be in the, it might be in the Western part of Canada to be the best. But the, the, you, the, basically you can be absolutely exceptional, um, which are deeply passionate about also, you know, very much like the purpose an organization would have. And then your profit per X is that other piece in there. And, you know, Brad, is, and Brad, we're, Brad and I were talking about before the show is that those things should really be in sync. They, they, they all need to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And the center of all of that is your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal that you're, you know, you're aspiring to achieve in this next 10 to 25 years. But those three elements with the BHAG at the center, yeah, they all flow very well. And, you know, Brad and I were talking about some of our clients and the work that we've done. And um, it's damn simple once you boil it down and get it right. Until you get there, it be, can be confusing. But the point is, those things fit together into this core center of your strategy. And you're like, oh, yeah, totally simple. That's the way it should be. And then it becomes like a North Star or a Southern Cross that you continue to follow for years. So if you can't be the best in the world at it, it shouldn't form part of your core business, okay? And there should be a really strong connection between what you can be the best in the world at and your profit per X, okay? So for example, yes. if you if you had a, a profit per X around profit per person, then what you can be the best in the world at somehow has to be connected to profit per person. So it could be training people. It could be um, growing our team to be industry leaders or something like that. So you don't need to quote that necessarily, but you've got to see, when we say a jigsaw, you've got to see this, this connection that's really sensible and logical, a logical fit between what you can be the best in the world at and profit per X. And then of course, overlaying that in terms of what you're deeply passionate about. Because yep. if you're not deeply passionate about something, and if you can't have a strategic economic driver of it being profit per X, and you can't be the best in the world at it, then you've got to keep digging. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, it's not rocket science, but it's about getting this boiled down. So you, you get the essence of your business. And then you get, in this case, you get that key metric that helps you to stay focused on what really creates value for the business and what gets everyone looking through that same window. Yeah. So an interesting one is as you scale, um, would you want more profit per X? So would you want more X? As I just gave the example of profit per person. If I asked you the question then, would you want more people working in your organization? And you said, hell no, we want to be the leanest possible thing ever. And we don't want to have, we don't even like people. Then you've got a problem. So you've got to be able to say, yes, we want more X's. Um, yes. Um, there's got to be a, a logical fit there as well. So I want to give a, a, a quick example of a profit per X that most people would know of, and that's Amazon. So um, we know that Jim Collins did work with Amazon back in about the year 2000 um, and really helped them to understand their um, hedgehog and to, to set them up for today. So 
Amazon's today, um, I mean, what do we think it might be? They've, they're in so many different segments um, from shoes Every, to movies um, to like they, do, they, they sell almost everything. They sell so many things. I mean, they're in, they bought Whole Foods in America, uh, a health food store. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a central economic thing that holds it all together, and that's profit per prime subscriber. So if you want to get free delivery, you need to become a prime subscriber. And I don't know how much that costs per year. You would probably know that better than me, like $80 a year or something. Is I it? pay it. I don't even know what it costs. I don't really care. It's but, such good value. But there is a, yes. yes, but there is a cost in there. Um, so you need to pay to oh, be yeah, a prime is, subscriber. There is, there, there's a, there is a cost, yeah. It's and, some and that unlocks, you get free movies and yep. TV. You get yep. free songs. You get free books through the Kindle. Yep. You get free delivery. And all yep. of those things seem, um, they seem like incredible value, as you just said. But But when they look at it from a purely strategic perspective, they say, if we can get someone to be a prime subscriber, we can double the amount of profit that we will get from that prime subscriber or triple or whatever it might be. It ties them to us in a meaningful way. It does. And the key point is that they figured out we should look at prime subscribers because they are, in their case, extra special customers. There's right? a and and look, looking at those customers and how do we maximize those extra special customers makes them think about different things. Who knows if that's why they came up with Prime Video? It's something else to get people locked into that system, and you know, it, it will create all kinds of interesting thinking and discussions. There's an interesting quote from Jeff Bezos, and he said, "When we win a Golden Globe, it helps us sell more shoes," and that and that really speaks to the intercon the the art seemingly unrelated interconnectedness, but they know that if they win a Golden Globe, more people watch the TV, more people become Amazon Prime subscribers, we're able to market to those people and suddenly we're selling more shoes or whatever yes. else it is. Yes, because you're already in their system as a super loyal customer because you're not transactionally loyal. You actually pay to be a customer. That's a whole different level of loyalty and in their business model, it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to be sure, you know, Costco probably you know, it's probably the same idea because they're almost a, you know, a pay to play business. You pay to be a member. Yeah. They're, I'm sure they're looking at profitability per member, or that would be a interesting, you know, interesting to see if Costco would be better to be thinking about, you know, profitability per member or whether it be profitability per, per, per visit. I don't know what that would be. You know, some, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I we, we'll have to ask. The it's the same with Apple. I mean, Apple is profit per Apple ID. So when you buy your first Apple product, you get the, the, a part of the purchase process, you get an Apple ID. Yeah. And they're always asking the question, how can we get more profit out of every Apple ID? Um, and that's why, you know, they sell computers through to television shows, through to everything and watches, you through, name it. Yeah. And if I look at the stuff, the amount that my, my profit per must be insane because... <laughs> No, because of all the devices I have, all my team, most of my team has Apple devices. My family has Apple devices, plus the subscriptions that we have to Apple Music and the iCloud subscription I now have and the amount of audio books that I purchased through, through iTunes. Yeah. Awesome. And so, and so the next point is that it's a strategic filter. Like those two examples that we've provided, this is a strategic filter for uh, decisions. So yes, all of your decisions, I mean, strategy helps you to, to know confidently what to say no to. And so uh, it will help you stay out of commodity thinking. It helps you to ask the question, if we buy this business, if we open up in this new location, if we start this thing, will it help us to drive our profit per X? Yeah, it's yeah, pretty straightforward. It makes you thinking, it makes you think about your business through that window we talked about before. So you ask the right questions and continue to do the right things. And, and when you're having a debate, it becomes the number one thing. And, you know, with our, a lot of our clients, it's, does it speed up the flywheel is one filter. 
and another a speed up or enhance our flywheel, pardon me. And then secondly, does it drive profit per X or have a positive impact on profit per X? Because sometimes people get excited about big opportunities that would really dilute our profit per X. Now, we still might do it. It's not that we wouldn't do it, but we're cautious or conscious of what it will do to that profit per X. And we might, you know, do something very different. Yeah. Because we, you know, we might choose to do it and realize that we'll take the dilution or, or that we won't do it because it's not worth the dilution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, and it helps us to um, pick the right answers. Okay. So when we're asking these questions, it, it distills it right down. I've got a client that I work with and we started off, it was profit per person. So per labor. Uh, and we started off, it was about $28 in labor that they were getting um, per person over the whole business. Um, and we kept on asking the question time and time, how can we get it to 29? How can we get it to 30? Just yep. a little bit by constantly asking those questions over about seven or eight years, we got it to like $75, which is a huge increase, but we can only do that by relentlessly focusing on asking those questions. How can we get Correct. it? And it made us move to different, almost a different industry. Um, but yeah. you can imagine the compounding effect across the business that that's had. Yeah. And, and, and to kind of sum it up, it's, it's just an awesome obsession. Yeah. It's an obsession that helps to move your business to not only be bigger, but to be better and stronger. That is the idea behind this. Cause a lot of people become bigger but their business isn't necessarily better. And yeah. especially as measured by the return you're, that you're providing, the, the shareholders are providing, you know, based on the resources that you're using. Awesome. All right. So good chat today about the profit per X, the single economic denominator that you should focus on. Don't focus on too many things, just one thing, and that's your profit per X. Um, as always, um, good to have you here today for our chat on the Growth Whisperers. I'm Brad Giles. You can find me at evolutionpartners.com.au. And my co-host here is the lovely Kevin Lawrence, who can be found at lawrenceandco.com. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. You can find us also at YouTube if you want to see the video version. Uh, do enjoy your week. We look forward to having a chat to you again next week. Take care. Have a great one.